Hello and welcome to my video tutorial series RPG in a Box. I am Carsten and in this episode I would like to show you how to create a startup script and bring your map to life. In the last episode we created our map and want to use it now to start the game. You can start the game by pressing the quick play button in the upper left and then the prompt asks you to uh, choose a ca player character. We have Rex and additionally we have to use a startup script which we haven't yet. The startup script describes how our game should behave. So we can open dialogues, make, uh, do positioning stuff with our camera, but the minimum we have to do is to load our map. So we have to create a new script by open the new resource tab and select script. We also can do it about uh, over the script editor and add the resource there, and we call it startup and press enter or the OK button. So we are in the script editor now. The script editor is our tool to control nearly every detail in the game by programmed logic. But don't worry, you don't need to do programming directly. You can use the drag and drop system and can build your logic from blocks, which we connect to each other. You can find the script editor at any time in the top navigation bar. To the left, you find the scripting tools where we can make our scripts from. And in the center, we have the workspace where we can position our blocks, we can zoom, we can drag and drop, and we can compose our script by the blocks there. It's up to you to decide if you want to build your scripts by connecting blocks to each other and configure them or program directly. You have the Bauxit code editor where you can write your code directly. And my default behavior is to use the blocks first, look at the syntax and learn the syntax to program it then directly. Okay, in the left boxes there are our design elements. In the upper box there are standard program structure elements like assign a value to a variable, in this case evaluate a condition, uh, make a while loop and a for loop. Then with break we can exit a loop and with return we can return values from functions which we need later in the scripting episodes. In the lower box, there are the functions to manipulate our game world, like adding effects and entities and something else, which we come later to. Uh, first, we need a load map function, so we can use the filter with load map and select the load map function and drag it into our workspace. We don't need the display message block, but we keep them and fill it with a message to start up our world and I use the German, welcome to my world. So now we can decide if the text should be spoken by a character with a character portray or default with no portray. So I, uh, I choose none. Now we configure the load map element. We choose the start area and now we have to select the tile. We can see it in the map editor. So we have to select our tile with the select tool and we see it's the coordinate 0, 0, 0 and we input them in the boxes and choose the direction in which look, the player should look at startup. Then we save the configuration. You also can edit your code directly by pressing the edit button and you can maximize the window to input it directly. About Bauxit syntax and functions we will talk in a later episode. It's much beyond the scope of this episode. So that's it. We can start our map by saving the script and then press the quick play button. We choose our script and with OK, we can directly jump into the game. So now we are in the start menu with options. You can choose anti-aliasing or the display mode. You can also choose the display layout and with new game, we can jump into the game. Our game is currently at a very low level and we will improve it soon. So press new game and we see our display message. Welcome to my world. There is no speaker, so it's just a box without a portrait. If you click the left mouse button, you jump right into the game with a quick loading screen. Here you can navigate with WASD, arrow keys or left mouse button. Our navigation paths were used to calculate the path for the character. You can use the right mouse button to rotate. We have an inventory icon. And that's all about our game features. So let's quit the game and I will tell you something more about features of RPG in the box. So one important thing is that we can change the feeling of our game just by editing the configuration. So we can go to the settings tab. 
And inside this, we have also the settings tab. You can go to general to change our startup script or character. And the interesting one is the gameplay. There you can change the camera by selecting the preset to custom. And then you can change the camera type from standard to isometric view, which is a diagonal view between the X and the Y axis. You can choose default zoom, allowing the zoom change the angles. So we click OK. And now we will try it in the engine. So we are back in the game and it's changed a lot. So north is in the upper right. The camera angle has changed in the diagonal between X and Y. And our models are also 3D. So another variant is to go to the settings and change the camera type to first person. So we're looking from the eyes of our character. There we can limit the mouse look by enabling the limit mouse look. So we press OK and try it in the engine. So we go in the game. And now it feels like we were the character. We are limited to our navigation paths straight in the lines. But we also can use an experimental feature. So we have to go back and choose the settings, experimental in the left, and enable free movement. And now we go back to the game. So the game changed again. And we have the feeling that we can move freely in our 3D, uh, 3D space. So we also limited to the navigation paths and cannot fall from the platform because our navigation paths are limited on the tiles. So go out of the game and we have other things. In the gameplay section, we can choose lighting modes. So we can enable a day-night cycle with dusk and dawn, and we have to define a preset for day and night. In the mechanics, we can change the action system. There is real time where enemies engage us and attack us. But we also can change this value to roguelike, where we use action points and attack points. I stay at real time. Interesting is the fog of war. I choose a distance of two fields, which will, I will show you next. And uh, I want to save. And I change the camera to a standard view. And I want to rotate by 90 degrees. So I choose this. Next, in the user interface, we have configuration modes for the UI. We can set up a loading screen, which we have to uh, um, choose from a picture or something else. We have a main menu as standard. We can use a tooling UI where we can uh, select uh, a hammer or an axe. We have a quick slot bar for uh, healing potions and something else, a skill bar, uh, like a healing skill for uh, magic points. Um, then we can show the player health bar where we see our uh, health level and we can choose the minimap. So I try all, but maybe they are not configured yet. Then we can choose in multiple cursors. We can choose sounds for everything. We can choose the localization. Interesting for me is the German one. So I take the German local default and fall back uh, also to German. I show more in the next season, uh, next episodes. And that's it. So we can go back to the game. And now it's quite funny. If we are in the game, we don't see the whole map. Instead, we see just two tiles around us and we have to explore the map. So we can walk and unlock the view to our tiles. Another option is to set the fog of war to fixed. So we lose the information of the explored fields if we leave them. So we can build something like a maze where we can explore the path to the exit. But instead of making a maze, I will build a spiral instead to show you the effects. So we saved the level and changed the fog of war distance to one tile and we'll jump back in the game. So now we see just one tile around us and we lose the I missed something. 
I want to change the experimental features to off. I don't like the free movement in for this case. Uh, so back in the game. So we see one tile around us and we have to unlock it and forgot the information about our level, or our map. And you can imagine you have a maze, so you can uh, choose the path to the maze and you can uh, use a scripted action system with um, movement points and uh, hung hunger and something else. So that's it for now. In the next episode, we will go to animating. I want winking eyes for my character in the idle state and complete animated movement. And then we will go to creating river with water, floating water and transparency effects. So if you enjoyed it so far, give me thumbs up, stay tuned, and I would be very excited about your subscription. See you in the next episode. Bye.